Hello, reader friends, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am really excited for this video because I'm going to be reading popular thrillers for the next week or so. I just started The Housemaid today, which was on my February TBR, so I'm excited to actually bust out books that are on my TBR. So far, I am on page 49. It is making me feel a little bit icky, which was something I was a little bit afraid of because I just got back into like wanting to read thrillers again and I don't want to feel like icky and gross and dark and twisty. So we're just really paying attention to that but this book is making me feel a little bit like icky and manipulated but I also kind of like it at the same time. So this is what we're currently reading. In this video I think I'm going to read The Housemaid, The House Across the Lake, and I don't know what my next popular thriller is going to be because like I said I just need to really pay attention to my brain and how much thriller dark and twisty stuff that I can handle in a specific amount of time so if I can't read more than one thriller in the week then I'm just going to be filming this video like over the next like two or three weeks and then hopefully that'll like help keep me sane <laughs> but we're just gonna kind of see how this goes so far ah! Like I said, I'm feeling a little bit gaslighted by one of the main characters. I do like Millie, who is our main character so far. She is a little bit questionable because she like talks about this past that she has, but doesn't really like elaborate on what happened, which I'm sure we'll find out like probably here soon. But the wife seems a little bit psychotic, but I'm also making a prediction that maybe she is acting a little bit psychotic because she's trying to get Millie out because she knows there's danger in the house. So I'm predicting that maybe the husband has something to do with it or maybe the wife is just psychotic. I don't know, but my mom just read this book and she said that it was super crazy, super twisty. So I texted her and I was like, I feel like the wife is very narcissistic and very gaslighting. And she said, just wait dot dot dot. So that made me feel like maybe there was a twist and like someone else was the danger and not her. I don't know. So this is just kind of me predicting what I think might happen. I really hope there is a love interest with the landscaping guy, but I don't know. We'll see what happens. But I'm going to keep reading and then I will keep updating you guys as I go. Hello friends. So I am on page 112 now of The Housemaid. Like this is a fast paced book, but also like, I don't know how I feel about it quite yet because it's so gaslighting and like you feel like you're going crazy and it's annoying because Nina, like one of the main characters, like it's the wife, she'll like say things and then she'll be like, I never said that. And so like, it just makes you feel like you're going crazy because you know that she, like, she did say a certain thing, but then I don't know. So like, I just don't like the way that she is like acting and making me feel. It makes me feel very icky, but that's also like kind of what makes this book good, I guess. Nothing crazy has happened yet. We are finding out more about Nina and kind of like what's going on with her. I still have suspicions about the husband because there's just no way that he's totally innocent in all this. I just, I feel like that is like the first thing that authors do is like they'll make the husbands or like the other significant person seem like totally innocent and nice and whatever. And just like the way that Millie's talking about him just makes me feel like there's going to be something wrong with him later on. This is also kind of giving me Verity vibes. Verity was definitely better and more intense, but this is kind of giving the same, it's giving the same vibes, which excites me because I really liked Verity. So I'm hoping that this one is similarly paced, I guess I would say. It is about six o'clock, 6.30 right now, so I don't have a whole lot of time left in the night to read this because I do have to work tomorrow and I'm not gonna let myself stay up till 2 a.m. to read it. I need to sleep like a normal human being. So hopefully I will actually get it finished by tomorrow and then I can start The House Across the Lake. I don't know, maybe I'll start one of my romance books or The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy like in between because I feel like that's just too much for my brain and I don't want to make myself go into an ick again like an icky funk so I don't know we'll we'll kind of see how I feel after 
I get a little bit more through this. But yeah, as of right now, I am liking it. It's not my favorite though, because I do just feel kind of like icky. Cause like, even though Verity made me feel a little bit icky, I still really liked it because like you definitely felt like you were going crazy a little bit, but it wasn't like this where she specifically like says and does things and then is like, I didn't say that. I didn't do that. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. And you're like, obviously that happened because it's, it's there and you said it, if that makes sense. So like, it's good, but it's not my favorite so far, but I don't know. We'll see how I'm feeling once I get more of the way through it. As always, I will update you guys again whenever I am a little bit further in. <sighs> I knew it. I, I knew it. <laughs> I am on page 192. So I didn't realize that this has like a part one and a part two. So part one is from Millie's point of view. And then part two is I'm assuming from fully from Nina's point of view. So now we're on Nina's point of view. Oh my gosh. So I don't want this to have spoilers. So in the most spoiler free way I can explain this. Mm. I had a feeling that something was gonna happen and I was right. I don't know what that something is though. All I know is that I was right. I was right. I am interested to see to the extent of how right I was, but I don't know. I'm still really confused about like what's going on with Nina and like what's happening there. But I also have a strong feeling that I literally can't say anything without spoilers. This book, just got really intense, like really intense. The entirety of the book thus far, it's been like fast paced, but kind of slow at the same time. Like nothing super crazy has happened, but it's, it's fast paced. Like I could not put it down. It wasn't like my favorite at first. Cause I just like, I, Nina's character is just extremely irritating, but it's definitely starting to get more intense now and I feel like now that we are following Nina's point of view we will get more clarification and more explanation as to what the heck is going on with her and why she acts the way she does. I'm very interested. <laughs> it's already 8 20 and I need to go to bed by 10 30 so I am hoping and praying that I can finish these next 120 something pages 130 something pages I'm hoping I can finish that in the next two hours <laughs> okay so I'm according to my calculator and the speed at which I usually read I'm not gonna finish it for another three hours but since I am flying through this book I'm hoping that I can finish it by tonight. If I have to stay up like an hour later, then I guess I must, which I feel like is what's going to happen. <laughs> I don't even know what else to say. This is, this is a pretty good book. I definitely feel like it's getting me, I don't feel like I was necessarily in a reading slump, but I also feel like I just wasn't reading really good books lately. Like I haven't had a book that I really, really liked since Five Survive. And even though I did just read that like two weeks ago, if that, that still feels like a long time for me to like not read a book that I really enjoy, you know? So I read Rock, Paper, Scissors and that was, no, did not like that one. And then I am listening to Court, which is gonna take me a long time to actually finish. And then I read A Song for the Wild Bill and that one was cute but I feel like I was confused like 90% of the time. So it wasn't like super enjoyable for me, but it was still like a cute, cozy read. So it feels good to have a really fast paced binge in one day type of book to read again. And even though I do feel a little bit icky, I don't feel like it's overly dark. I don't know, maybe it's about to get way darker, but I don't, I don't feel like it's too dark to where I feel like, ugh. You know, but I'm gonna continue reading this and I will update you guys when I am either done with it or just a little bit farther through. <sighs> um, so I finished this book, you know, and I just, I have a lot of words and I don't even know how to say them. <laughs> you know, at the beginning of this book, I wasn't 
loving it. Like it was a good book, but I wasn't like absolutely loving it. I felt like Nina's character was very annoying and I did not like being gaslighted and manipulated like that. It just, it made my brain hurt a little bit. And then by the end of part one, which was Millie's point of view, I made a prediction and I was right, like I said, but then things just, <sighs> They took a turn that I just wasn't ready for. Mm. Long story short, I got really triggered by the second part of the book, like Nina's point of view. Mm, yeah. So this is gonna be a little bit of spoilers. So if you haven't read this book, maybe skip over this specific part. So in the second part, we are reading about Andrew's personality, so to say, and just the things that he does and who he is. And that really reminded me of my ex, very much so. I mean, he wasn't to the extent of like almost killing me, but there was one specific part and it was the first part I read pretty much when he got all worked up about Nina's hair being grown out and like her roots showing and something like that happened with my ex. There was one night where we were all going out. We were at the bar and I was wearing my hair up because my hair was disgusting from like just being at the beach all day Um, because I was like living in Hawaii at the time. He wanted me to put my hair down and I wouldn't because my hair was a disaster, which is why I had it up in a bun. And he got super pissed at me and like just went super dark and was like calling me names. It was, yeah, it was just a really bad night to say the least, one of many. Anyway, that specific, just the hair thing just literally took me right back to my own situation with somebody like that. And that was really hard for me, not gonna lie. I, Andrew's behavior just reminded me so much of his and definitely, definitely triggered me quite a bit, but I wanted to keep going because I had a feeling that it was going to take a turn. I didn't want to DNF it because I knew that I was going to enjoy the book. And I knew, like I said, that there was going to be some kind of turn where like one of the women gets the upper hand, if that makes sense. I persevered and I kept going and I'm so freaking glad I did because that ending, it was crazy, but it was also like in a weird way, very empowering because this man that did all of these super incredibly horrible things to these women. I don't want to say he got what he deserves because like no one deserves to die, but like just the fact that that happened to Nina for so long, but also it happened to Millie too. And Millie turned around and was like, absolutely not. And then at the end of the book, Nina was able to get her life back and move her and her daughter to an entirely new place. And it was, it was all just, it was so empowering and it was so heartbreaking and so interesting to see like what Nina had to do to get out of that situation. To an extent, obviously, like I just felt so much for those characters because like I too have been in a position where I'm just in survival mode for so long. And just that feeling of like finally getting your life back after it was taken from you for so long. It's just like, I just, I felt all of those feelings like with the characters and it's, oh my gosh, it was, it was just more than a thriller to me. And my, I mean, I expected some things and I definitely like called some things, but I did not expect it to go to that, like the extent and the way that it did go, if that makes sense. I don't know. So if that made any sense, I hope it did. My final thoughts are this book is absolutely amazing. It has easily become one of my favorite books I have ever read. This is up here with A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, The Cruel Prince. Like it's, it's with those books. I think I like it more than The Maid by Nita Prose, which was one of like my favorite books of 2022. When a book is like so fast paced, it's thrilling. It's got a good twist, but it's also just, it's more than a thriller. Like it actually has depth to it. That's a good book. That's all I'm saying. Trigger warnings though, I will say I did wish I knew. I wish I just looked at, that's what I need to start doing. I need to start looking at trigger warnings before I go into books. Protect your minds, do what's good for you. If you don't think that it is good for you to read that, then please do not <laughs> by any means. <sighs> now that that is over, I, 
don't know what I'm gonna read next. Um, I think I'm either gonna do the house across the lake or maybe in between these two books i might read something a little bit lighter so that i'm not putting myself in a dark twisty hole of emotion i did just get off work so i am going to make some dinner and then i'm probably honestly gonna hop right into the next book so we'll see what i end up picking hello friends so i did start the house across the lake as my second thriller and i am currently on i've been really bad at like updating so i'm currently on page 166 i'm like almost halfway through the book um it's good nothing like crazy has happened yet. I heard that there was like a lot of plot twists and nothing like super twisty has come up yet, but there is a lot of very questionable things happening. I do have my suspicions. I mean, obviously the husband is a little suspicious, but then also there's Boone and Boone is like the neighbor dude. And so far he's sweet and helpful and he's like on Casey's side but I don't know I just I don't think that and I've been wrong about people before but I just I feel like there is something also that we're not being told about him like I feel like there's something that either he's hiding or he's not as good as we think he is I don't know like I just I have a weird feeling that something's gonna happen like with Boone but I don't know. Cause then the other part of me is also hoping that he could be like maybe a new love interest. So I don't know. I'm kind of all over the place with this one. It's not super fast paced. Like it's, it's pretty good pace wise, but it's not like super fast paced, which I kind of knew going into it that um, it probably wasn't going to be like at first. But now that I'm kind of like hitting that halfway point, I feel like things are gonna like really start picking up. We did just find out something that is a little bit sketchy. I don't wanna say what happened because then that would be like a spoiler. Casey did some investigating. I guess I would say she just saw something that was a little bit questionable and alarming. So, but then like as she was doing that, she like was about to get caught. I hope this isn't spoilers. I'm trying to word it in a way that's like not spoilish. But anyway, so she, she was like about to get caught and like Boone came to the rescue, which also makes me think that Boone was probably watching the whole time. I don't really know. That's just kind of like my guesses. I'm very interested to see the twists that are probably coming up soon. I don't know, man, but I will update you guys when I have read more of the way through. I am on page 234 now. With all of the thrillers that I read, I feel like I've become very good at guessing who's sketchy and like what's going on because something that I thought was a little suspicious and a little sketchy turns out to be somewhat right, but I still feel like there's a possibility that I could be surprised because I do have about 100 pages left and there's still a lot that hasn't necessarily been explained, but people are lying. I will say though, I don't think I like books that have unreliable narrators. Is is that what it is? Because I hated The Girl on the Train and that kind of gives me similar vibes with them both being like really mentally unstable and alcoholics. I mean, Casey's not like super mentally unstable, but I mean, she's depressed and dealing with her husband's death so like I don't know um but so far it's it's all right it's not like my favorite I haven't been necessarily like shocked yet but we will see how the rest of this goes like I said I have about 100 pages left so I still have opportunities to be surprised I am going to finish this in the next hour or two so I will let you know how it ends up going for me <laughs> Literally what? Um, okay, so <laughs> I don't <laughs> I don't know how I like where this went. I'm thoroughly surprised though. I definitely did 
not expect it to take that turn. It makes sense though, because of like what was kind of talked about like earlier in the book, but I am not a fan of paranormal stuff at all. So if I would have just checked going into this book, I might have not read it. Cause yeah, not a fan, not a fan at all of that. Was I surprised? Extremely. Did I expect that? Absolutely not. Oh my gosh. I really feel for Casey now. I understand why she is the way she is. I mean, like I still don't like those types of characters in books, but like it makes sense now. I was shocked, did not expect that, but it's also like, I don't know how much I love that. I know with this book, it has a lot of love or hate on it. There's not a lot of like just mediocre reviews on it. I definitely don't swing towards the hate side. I feel like I'm pretty mediocre. Like as of right now, I'm, I'm not done with it. I'm on page um, 274. So I have like 80 pages left roughly, under 100 pages. But I, I think I would give it like a 3.75. I don't know if it's quite a four star yet. And I'm again, not even done with it yet. So I don't know, maybe there's a lot, a lot more that's gonna happen. But um, as of right now, as of page 200, and 74. That definitely shocked me, but I didn't love it. So it's like, eh. It is still like a decently good book. Like I said, I would probably give it like a 3.75. It's fine. You know, like it's not bad, but it's not like super great either. It's kind of just like, it's just there you know? But I'm gonna finish this and then I will give my final thoughts. And then I need to read another book tonight that is not scary <laughs> because I don't want to have nightmares, okay? <laughs> but I'm gonna finish this and then we'll uh, carry the conversation once that's done. So I finished this. I have so many thoughts that, ah, uh, the ending? There were so many things going on and my, like, my brain was just like, what? Retracting back to what I had initially said, Boone was hiding something and there was a secret, but it wasn't nearly as bad as what I had thought. Overall, I don't know how I feel about this book. I think I'm still sitting at like a good 3.75. There's just like too many things in my brain and I'm still trying to like digest like what just happened. To say the least, no. I did not expect the way that this book went. There was things that I thought had something to do with it, which I was somewhat right about. And there was a lot of different plot twists, especially more towards the end. Cause like your initial thought of like what was going on, like that kind of got replaced with like this other huge plot twist. But then by the end, they kind of like revisited like your beginning thoughts. So I don't know, it was just kind of like, there was like a lot of different chunks of the story that kind of like played out. And then they kind of all ended up being hand in hand with each other. But I still think there was just a little bit too much going on, but the twists were pretty good. Like I just said before, I just don't like paranormal stuff. So it wasn't really for me. All in all, I think I did it for the most part, enjoy this. I honestly don't even know how to like explain my thoughts on this book. I'm going with 3.75. We'll see how I feel about it later. Now that that is done, I don't really know what thriller I wanna pick up next. I have quite a few on my TBR. As of right now though, I need something not thrilling and twisty and spooky. Anyway, so I will let you guys know what I end up picking up whenever I pick it up. So I think I may have lied a little bit and I'm only gonna read two books for this video. I was going to read three popular thrillers, but I don't think I'm going to be reading another thriller for a while because I have to read The Stolen Heir and then I'm going to be reading my romance books for my romance video. So I just, I don't think I'm gonna be done with this video for a while. So we're just gonna stick to two books, but they are two books that were very popular in 2022. So I still had fun and I hope you guys had fun watching it. Maybe when I have the time to read like three thrillers in a row, I will, but for now, I think two is gonna be like my max. I am really excited to get into my romance books. This is gonna be exciting and I'm hyped 
for it. I have heard nothing but good things about both of the books that I am reading for my little romance video. And my boyfriend just got me a Barnes & Noble gift card for Valentine's Day, so I'm gonna go get more books. Do I need them? Absolutely not. But do I want them? Absolutely. Yeah, that's about it for <laughs> this video. I love you guys so much. I'm so thankful for all of you. I cannot believe that we hit 10,000. That literally is just absolutely nuts and it completely blows my mind. I am so thankful for you all. You have no idea. I hope you have a really good rest of your day or night or morning, whatever time of day it is. I will see you in my next video. Mm -hmm.